hike this morning at sunrise with my doggie, and when I got down by the barn area where there's a night light out, I found a big native, one of our larger North American moths, the Luna moth. So I collected what I think is her. I collected her because I want to share her with you, and I want you to take a look with me, and we'll zoom in on her so you can also learn to identify her. So I got her laying on a piece of bark here, and we'll zoom in together. Let's see some of the characteristics of her. So she was obviously, where'd she go? There she is. She was obviously confused by the night lights, which is one of the things, one of the shortcomings of having those big old lights up at night. But anyway, she's drawn to that. Now what she's supposed to be doing right now, what she's supposed to be doing, she's only gonna be alive as an adult for seven to 10 days. Woo, short-lived. And she can't even eat because she doesn't have any mouth parts, which is pretty an amazing fact. So what she's gonna do is she first she was gonna release a pheromone into the air. And as she's releasing that, it's gonna draw in the males. The males, all, both of them are really good, strong flyers. And so the male can come in several miles to come find the female according to the scent that he catches. And then what they're gonna do is mate, usually around the midnight hour. And then after that, immediately by sunrise, she's gonna get outside and she's gonna start laying eggs. Her preferred host trees would be the hickories and the walnuts, persimmons. That's what we have locally around here in Maryland, in my section of Harford County. So that's what she'd be seeking. And that's why I hike down here into this little walnut grove. That's in case she flies away real quick, I can let her go to a habitat where she's gonna lay eggs. And that's what she'll do for the next few days. She'll lay several groups of 200 to 400 eggs up in the treetops. And of course, those eggs will hatch in a very short period. I think it's within a day, those eggs are gonna hatch and they're gonna start flying around. They're gonna start eating along the trees. So they don't cause any major damage to trees. So even if you had these in your landscape, you wouldn't be so concerned about them. But she's going the little caterpillars are gonna be up in the trees. They go through five different instars. And the funny part, the funny fact that I read this morning is the little caterpillars can talk. They actually make a clicking sound. And that clicking sound precedes their regurgitation of their intestinal foods. And so, true enough, the predators figure out that that clicking sign precedes the puke. And so they've learned. So they say even mice and ants will not attack your Luna uh, your little Luna caterpillar because they, they get keyed in on what that sound, that clicking sound is. So kind of a pretty cool little fact. But this little caterpillar will live up in the top of the walnuts and I'll show you my little walnut grove. This is a grove of many different walnuts up in here. So that's what they'll lay their eggs in for the next 10 to, uh, few weeks, four to six weeks they're gonna lay eggs up in these, tr I mean they're gonna be feeding on the foliage up in the walnuts. And then when they complete their their uh, cycle, which is a five in-store life cycle, they're gonna climb back down the tree and they're gonna come into things like leaf litter, which is a little different than many of our caterpillars. They're gonna come down into some leaf litter and they're gonna roll up and make a silky web inside the leaves and things. And they're gonna actually pupate on the ground, which is uncommon because most of our caterpillars do not pupate on the ground. They're pupating on the end of a stick or something. Doesn't sound very safe, does it? So that's what it would do, pupate on the ground, and if it's going into diapause for winter, it would actually overwinter the whole time on the ground. Whew, doesn't sound very safe, does it? And then if it's during the summer in the mid-Atlantic region, this particular luna moth will have two generations. So it could be that that little caterpillar is gonna develop into adult moth and then lay eggs. And so here in our region, two generations down south, Georgia, Florida could have three generations. Up in Canada, they only have one generation. But a pretty cool, fascinating little fact about them. Um, look at Dr. Uh, Raup, Mike Raup from the University of Maryland. He describes the front of this as a big smile. This marker is like a little smile with these eye spots. They do have an eye spot on all four of their wings, but he considers that a little smile, which I thought was creative. Look at the long tail. It's kind of twisted and undulated. They're not fully sure. They, they say that that can uh, confuse bats who would be one of their predators, and that their ultrasound, this tail confuses the ultrasound. But a very good, strong, flying moth. And so I'm just gonna encourage you, if you were to find them, please catch them. Take them out to where there's some walnut trees, like I've done, this walnut region. 
and let them go in a nice habitat where you know she wants to lay her eggs. Some other trees that they prefer are birches and sweet gums. So that's what I encourage you to do. Save them from those swooping swallows that I saw this morning. Take care.